and from the heresies of the Essenes. Did you know that? And he said, no. I said, that's what they believed. And they were Gnostics. And, oh. And a lot of Christian teaching today comes from Eastern religions. But it's mixed up as Christianity. And so here's Paul, and the book of the Colossians is trying to straighten people out. Now, the Western culture is immersed in wrong thinking and wrong teaching and a wrong idea. You know, there's, there's as I said uh, last week, there's this frightfully, frightfully, you know, to be a Christian, you've got to be ever so nice. Must not upset anyone. Um, you know, oh, praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. Uh, and it, it's that kind of smarmy, teeth deep kind of yuck. I want to smack them in the mouth. I can't stand that kind of thing. It, it's wrong. Uh, it's just not true and real. Um, it's manners of culture, but it's not true. Jesus took a whip to people. And he did not use the whip and say, please move along, please move along. He drove them out with a whip. And he kicked over the money changers' tables. The Bible says, the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. Hey, the prosperity teaching, someone needs to kick the tables over. Someone needs to get a whip to those guys. Because, you'll notice, once they were all outside... The blind, the main, and the Hulk came into the temple and he healed them every one. That's what the Bible says. But whilst the money changers were there, no miracles happened. And no miracles, no Jesus. So I just want you to kind of think outside of your thinking. Um, think outside. Because if you think conventionally then you'll remain with your deceptions. Strongholds are in the, of Satan are in the mind. That's in your reasonings and imaginations. And, and reasoning and imagination can tell you one thing, and God says something else. Now you've got to side with God. Okay? Uh, you'll find Jesus went up, as it were, in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he's a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit, no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now, look, everyone was whispering. It's amazing. People whisper for fear. Well, you know, where is he, I wonder? You know, we've heard about him. Have you, have you seen this Jesus? We don't know where he's gone. And they started chatting amongst themselves. He'd raised the dead, he'd done miracles, and they were thinking, where is he gone? Surely he's coming. Ha, <laughs> Now, verse 14, in the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They really, he hadn't gone to the right school. He hadn't learned the right philosophy. And so if you go to Colossians, we'll start in chapter 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which you have to all the saints. Now, he starts off, and he wants everyone to know, first of all, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, 
and God himself and he starts to make it plain right at the beginning the divinity of Christ because the Greek philosophy was that man could be his own savior know thyself and come into an idea philosophical idea of being able to cope with life through knowing yourself and so immediately he comes and he wants you to know that this Jesus that came he wasn't a transcendental meditational person uh, what he was was the son of God and God was his father all right we give thanks to God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ and then he says we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus uh, and the love to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof you have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel now he talks about the word of the truth of the gospel he doesn't talk about knowledge here he talks because you see Gnosticism was so prevalent amongst the Greeks that he didn't want to use the word knowledge because they would flip over into where they thought knowledge was which was in self-knowledge and reasoning and rationality and so he wants them to know you know it's faith faith now faith is something totally different you have faith in a person not in a philosophy not in understanding you have faith in the person of Jesus Christ who is God God is his father all right are you understanding what I'm saying it's not knowledge very dangerous when someone thinks that by knowledge you can know God you can't know God by knowledge and reason you know God by revelation and that takes faith and so he goes on and he explains it and you need to get hold of this and understand it all right the word of the truth of the gospel which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth in you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth now once you hear it you come into a knowledge of God you don't come into a knowledge of a philosophy you come into a knowledge of a person and, and he says right once you heard it you knew God uh, the whole teaching of Christianity is about God theology is the study of God it's not the study of man now it's amazing how most theological seminaries are full of people who have um, taken courses in anthropology which is the study of man but a theologian 